Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now we're going to have the midnight session. Is that all right? I said, is that all right? Why don't you jump on your feet this time? And you tell the Lord at this midnight session, the Lord will not pass you by. Double miracle, triple miracle, multiple miracles upon our lives in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name tonight. What a wonderful Father you are. Thank you, Lord, for all the things you have done. We pray, Lord, all these testimonies and miracles will be permanent in Jesus' name. And every one of us here tonight will not just hear what happens to other people. We too will be partakers of the miracle power in Jesus' name. Every promise of God right here tonight will belong to everybody. The power manifestation tonight belongs to everybody. Lord, I pray that the mighty power of God in an explosive manner, dynamic manner, will touch everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. This night of supernatural deliverance, I pray, Lord, no yoke will remain. No curse will remain. No affliction will remain. And no power of the enemy will remain in Jesus' name. Confirm your mighty power in everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're looking at First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. I'm reading verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Look at the second part. For this purpose. For this reason. To this end. The Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. This midnight hour, I bring the message to you, destroying the, we the works and the weapons of the devil. There are weapons that Satan uses in the lives of people. Sometimes it's to control. Sometimes it's to distract. Sometimes it's to afflict. Sometimes it's to destroy. Sometimes is to take the good of your life, to take it away. All those weapons of the enemy, this night, were destroying them. The works of the devil, what it does in bringing sickness, in bringing affliction, bringing poverty, bringing disaster, bringing accident. All the works of the devil, tonight in your life, they're destroyed in Jesus' name. The message, destroying the works and the weapons of the devil. Three points. Number one, the activities and the attacks of Satan. Let's recognize them. Let's know that this is of the devil. Then you know, if you know this is of the devil, you'll be able to come against it and you'll destroy it. The activities and the attacks of Satan. Number two, the authority and the ability of saints, the saints of God, the believers in the Lord, the disciples of the Lord. We have authority and we have ability, the authority and the ability of saints. Number three, the anointing and the armor of the Son. Any child of God, every child of God, we have the anointing and we have the armor of the sun. Number one, tell me number one. The activities and the attacks of Satan. I want you to look at Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, we 
are looking at verse 11. 13, 11. It tells us, And behold, there was a woman that had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years. I was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. You see, the problem of this woman had continued for 18 years. A chronic disease, a spinal kind of disease. She was bent over. She couldn't lift up herself. Medical science might give that disease different kinds of names, but the Lord recognized it as a spirit of infirmity. Look at verse 16. Ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? It was a bondage of Satan. It was an affliction from Satan. But the day she met Jesus, that bondage was broken. Tonight, and you come in face to face with Jesus, the bondage in your life is broken. The affliction in your life is taken away. No matter how many years that affliction, that bondage has remained there, 18 years, 20 years, 30 years, you come tonight in this divine encounter with the Lord and the yoke is broken in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38. Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by who? Of the devil. For God was with him. That tells you then, all those sicknesses that Jesus healed, those blind people, it was the work of the devil. Paralysis, work of the devil. All that cancer, that's work of the devil. And all those infirmities in the lives of people, it was the work of the devil. And whatever work of the devil is there tonight, we come here tonight in the name of the Lord to destroy that work of the devil in your body in Jesus' name. When I mention the name of Jesus in prayer tonight, heaven stands at attention. And all those demons, all those spirits, all those evil powers, they will go away from your life in Jesus' name. Will command them to pack their load and go. HIV AIDS is part of his load. Pack your load and go. Cancer is part of his load. Devil, pack your load and go. Insanity, brain problem is part of his work. Pack your load and go. All that thing walking about in the body and in the brain is the, is the load of the devil. Satan, I command you, pack your load and go. And all those hearing of voices, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing that, and you don't see anybody, it's the work of the devil. Satan, tell, tell him, tell him. Pack your load and go. And he has to go in Jesus' name. You see here it says, Jesus healed them. All that were oppressed of the devil. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. These are the activities of Satan. The attacks and the afflictions of Satan. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of the revelations, there was given unto me a son in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Here Paul the apostle recognized the buffeting, the beating, the boxing, the pounding. The kind of son in the flesh. He knew it wasn't the work of God. It was the work of the devil. All the buffeting in your life today that brings reproach upon your life. Tonight, we're going to dismiss that thing. We drive it out in Jesus' name. 
2 Corinthians, 2 First uh, Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 18. The activities, the attacks, the afflictions of Satan. First Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 18. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. There are many people that will say, I had this vision, I had this mission, I had this goal, I had this assignment, I had this meeting, I had this thing I wanted to achieve. But something always discourages me. Once I start like this, I'm not able to finish. There is a hidden hindrance somewhere. It's the work of the devil. Don't you see that verse? It says, but Satan hindered us. Somebody there, you had wanted to get married. And every time you are planning, I want to get married, I want to get, you get excited about it. All of a sudden, everything will cool down. It's like you're no more interested and Satan hindered you. I come here tonight, that activity of Satan, attack of Satan in your life, I come to destroy it tonight in Jesus' name. How do you think about a person that is in school? We think that is the joy of a student that you know that after three years to spend here, four years to spend here, five years to spend here, after five years I'm through, I come out, I go and work. But when the exam is coming, you've been preparing, all of a sudden, I'm not interested again. I will take the exam next session. And you yourself, you defer and you delay because Satan hindered you. Any good thing that is going to come your way, there is that thing that will bring discouragement and then you, you go back, you withdraw from it. Tonight is the night of deliverance. Deliverance has come tonight in Jesus' name. All the good things that should have come to you, and you yourself, you will hinder yourself. And you know you are doing it. And you say, you say I, I don't care, I don't care. It's later after the thing is gone, you'll be regretting. That thing that brings that regret perpetually in your life, tonight is the night of supernatural deliverance. Deliverance has come in Jesus' name. Point number two. The authority and the ability of saints. Thank God you are here tonight. If you don't know you have authority, authority is coming upon your life. I said authority is coming your way. And ability, ability is strength. Ability is might. Ability is power. And when there's a combination of ability and authority, strength and authority, skill and authority, power and authority. No evil power, no mountain can stand before you anymore in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Power and authority. Authority and ability. Luke chapter 9. We're looking at verse 1. In Luke chapter 9, reading from verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority. He gave them ability and authority. He gave them strength and authority over all devils. How many devils? How many devils? All devils and to kill diseases. Tonight, we have power over all spirits, over all devils, even over Satan, tonight, in any life, in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. From tonight, this will be your testimony. Lord, even the devils are subject unto me through thy name. Say that. Lord, 
even the devils are subject unto me through thy name. Say that again. Say it as if you really believed it in your heart. You are no more subject to the devil. The devils are subject unto you. You are no more under the power of the devil. The devil is under your power in Jesus' name. The devil is no more on top of you. You are now on top of the devil in Jesus' name. They came rejoicing. They came with celebrating. They came giving testimony. Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And behold, I give you power. Behold, he gives me power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Well, read the rest yourself. Tell me out loud, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. It will not hurt you again in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 16, rather. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and verse 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. I'm one of them. I said I am one of them. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Where are the hands who are going to lay on the sea? I anoint those hands again. I anoint those hands again. Believe this, believe this, believe this. This hands that you see, look at that hand now. Look at it, look at it, look at it yourself. This hand that you are looking at now, you will lay it on the sea and they will recover in Jesus' name. It's the authority the Lord has given you. And that authority will come in full force, in full power, this very year in Jesus' name. Now look at Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Reading verses 11 and 12. Authority and ability. Giving to the children of God, the saints of God. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And God wrought special miracle by the hands of, it's no more Paul. Paul is gone. Who is this now? Who is this now? Tell me your name. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of, that's you there. It will happen in Jesus' name. So that from his body were brought unto the sick, and cashiers, and aprons. And the diseases departed from them. Even the people that wash your clothes, while they are washing your clothes, evil spirits will pass away from them. Diseases will get away from them in Jesus' name. You know, you are going and then your handkerchief drops down. And then the person, somebody tries to help you and he picks up your handkerchief to say, this is your handkerchief, sir. Before you get that handkerchief back, they are healed already. Because it says, handkerchiefs and aprons, they were taken from the body of Paul. And now it is you. It has come to your turn. And the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. It is done in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, we're looking at verse 20. It says, the God of peace shall bruise Satan. The God of peace shall bruise Satan. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Under your feet shortly. Under your feet shortly. 
I'm coming back to that. I'm coming back to that. I'm coming back to that. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I'm still coming back to Romans chapter 16. There's a connection here in Genesis chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. That's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. That when Jesus said, it is finished, he gave the devil a spiritual, deafening, and destructive technical knockdown and knockout. He knocked him off. He, he became, that's how he came out of his senses because, and he has not recovered since then, and now it is your turn. The same way that Jesus bruised the head of the devil. When you mention the name of Jesus, that same Satan will be bruised under your feet in Jesus' name. Come back now, come back now to Romans chapter 16, and we're looking at verse 20. It says, and the God of peace. What does that mean? The God who gave you peace is salvation. Who gave you peace in your soul. Who gave you peace that passes understanding. That same God is the one that will subdue the devil, subdue Satan under your feet in Jesus' name. And then it says shortly. Shortly. What does that shortly mean? In a few minutes. Shortly, in a moment of time, shortly, very soon, very soon, when you stand up tonight, you are standing on the head of the devil. You are standing on top of all your problems because God himself, the God of peace, shall put Satan under your feet shortly. It will happen in Jesus' name. Number three, the anointing and the armor of the sun. The anointing and the armor of the sun. Do you remember from the day, from the moment, David had the anointing. He had the anointing in chapter 16. Immediately he had that anointing in chapter 16. When Saul had the challenge of mental problem, demonic problem, this uh, David, when the same chapter, he went there when he played upon the harp, all the evil spirits departed from Saul. And then the next chapter, chapter 17, when Goliath showed up, because of the anointing that came upon David, he was able to destroy the power of the Philistines, that he is Goliath. And tonight, anointing is coming upon you. That's the anointing that will break every yoke. And we have mighty anointing here tonight. Every problem in your life will be taken away in Jesus' name. Let me show you that the anointing, you have that anointing already. Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. I'm going to join verse 20. 20 and 21. For all the promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen, of the glory of God by us. All the promises of God will be yes in your life. I said all the promises are yes in your life. All the promises are amen in your life in Jesus' name. That's why I said when we pray and you hear the final amen, you know that amen is yours. That amen is yours. It means so let it be, so let it be, so let it be. It's done in your life in Jesus' name. 21. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, has anointed us, has anointed us, is God. That is, Paul the Apostle was saying, it is God himself that has anointed us. Samuel anointed David. Look at the result of the anointing. Samuel anointed David. Look at the effect of the anointing on his even playing musical instrument. Look at the effect of the anointing on the slick and on the stone. But now, Almighty God himself has anointed me. Almighty God himself has anointed you. This anointing will break every yoke. Will destroy every infirmity in your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. The anointing that breaks every yoke is here today. The anointing that destroys every work of the devil is coming from the pulpit. He are coming to you straight now in Jesus' name. 
Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, and it shall come to pass, it has come to pass already, in that day, that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. That heavy weight on your shoulder is taken away. That heavy load on your head is taken away. That heavy load on your back, bending you down, is taken away in Jesus' name. That heaviness on your chest is taken away in Jesus' name. The woman that has been pregnant for more than nine months, and it's like, you know, you're already counting more than 10, 12, 11, 12 months, and the load is still there, the pregnancy is still there, go back home and deliver in Jesus' name. It says, and then it says, and it's yoke from off thy shoulder, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There is anointing here tonight. And every yoke in your life is destroyed in Jesus' name. Remember, point number three is the anointing and the armor. The anointing and the armor. The anointing and the armor. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now you will stand. I said, now you will stand. You know, before the wind will blow and blow you down, the storm will come and blow you down, and all the challenges of life will come and put your back on the ground. But from today, you will stand. You will have a backbone to stand, the courage to stand, the conviction to stand, and the faith to stand in Jesus' name. Put on the whole armor. Put on the whole armor of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. All those principalities and powers tonight, they are destroyed in Jesus' name. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. All those, uh, you know, the chief of this and the leader of this and the champion of this and the head of that and the principal of that. All those rulers of darkness, all those rulers of the dark powers, we destroy them tonight in Jesus' name. Against spiritual wickedness in high places, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, you will stand like a conqueror. You stand like a champion. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, above all, above all, take, taking the shield of faith. This is for your protection. You are protected in Jesus' name. Do you know from tonight, no arrow of the devil will be able to penetrate into your body in Jesus' name. No arrow of the devil will be able to penetrate it to your eyes in Jesus' name. From behind, you'll be protected. In front, you'll be protected. Above, you'll be protected. Anything they send from any village, any riverside, will never get to you in Jesus' name. The power of the Almighty God will bring down that arrow before it gets to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench. How many pray that? How many tell me? How many tell me? All the funny darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Thank God tonight is the destruction of the works and the weapons of the devil in Jesus' name. Any stronghold in your life right there tonight, I come against it. Any evil power in your life tonight, I come against it. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. We have mighty weapons here tonight. I said we have mighty weapons here tonight. That mountain in your life, that, you know, you've been trying to use a shovel, a shovel to remove the mountain. That's why the mountain has been there. I come with a bulldozer tonight. I come with great caterpillar tonight. And then when you hear that final amen, that mountain is gone. And when you hear the amen of the people of God, you will know that that stronghold in your life will bring it down in Jesus' name. 
because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down, pulling down, pulling down. Everybody say, pulling down. Say that again. Pulling down of strongholds. Pull down the strongholds. Pull down the strongholds. I said we're pulling down the strongholds. Casting down. Ca we're pulling down. We're casting down. We're pulling down. We're casting. Don't you see? The thing is in your head. I bring it to the ground. The sin is your body, I bring it to the ground. The sin is your brain, I bring it to the ground. We cast down imaginations and every high sin that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. They thought they would bring you into captivity before, but you now, you are the one that will bring them into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now the time has come. Say the time has come time pulling down and the time of casting down and the time of rooting out every plant the heavenly father has not planted in your life this is the moment we're going to root it out in jesus name all those strongholds of the devil in your life in your family on your wife or your husband or your children or your parents we're pulling them down casting them down tonight in jesus name all those seeds of hatred, the seed of destruction, and the seed of defeat that the devil is bringing your family and bringing in, in your business, we're rooting everything out right now. Any plant the heavenly father has not planted in your body, has not planted in your wife, has not planted in your husband, has not planted in your family, look at husband and wife that love each other before they couldn't live without seeing each other. But now the hatred and you are backing each other. I bring that hatred away, the stronghold of the devil, away from your family in Jesus' name. Get up now, get the life militant soldiers of the Lord. It's time to cast down. It's time to pull down. It's time to root out that plant the heavenly father has not planted in your life, in your family. Root it out. Root it out. Root it out. Pull it down. Pull it down. It must not be there. It must not be there. Any power of the devil, any activity of the devil, any attack of the devil, any affliction of the devil, tonight is the night of pulling down. Tonight is the night of casting down. Tonight is the night of rooting up and rooting out and throwing away all those plants the heavenly father has not planted in your life. Sickness, root them out. Affliction, root them out. Infirmity, root them out. Oppression, root them out. Captivity, pull them down. Stronghold, pull them down. All the things the devil has been using to disturb you and to hinder you. And all those afflictions and attacks of the enemy, pull them down and cast them down. Tonight is that night. We have the authority, we have the power. We have the authority, we have the ability. We have the authority, we have the strength. We have the authority and we have the bulldozer to bring everything down that is negative in your life. All the seeds of failure, I root them out of your life. All the seeds of defeat, I root them out of your life. Tonight is your night to come out of that prison. Come out of that cage. Come out of that captivity. Come out of that infirmity. Come out of that sickness. The Lord has come to show you his power tonight. His glory tonight. The works of the devil destroyed. The weapons of the devil destroyed. There's enough anointing here tonight to root out, to pull down, to cast down every work of the enemy in your life. This is your night. It shall come to pass. It has come to pass. It shall come to pass, it has come to pass. It shall come to pass, it has come to pass. Casting down, pulling down, rooting out. Every plant the heavenly father has not planted in your life. Tonight you are delivered, tonight you are set free, tonight you are liberated. 
The power that sets free is here tonight. The power that casts down all those imaginations, they are here tonight. Activities of Satan will come down. Attacks of Satan will come down. The afflictions of Satan will come down. We have the authority, we have the ability. We have the anointing, we have the ammo. This sign shall follow all of us that believe. This sign shall follow the believing ones. This sign shall follow. This sign shall follow. This sign shall follow. In his name, we cast out devils. In his name, we bring healing to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now your time has come. I said your time has come. Every mountain will be moved away. Every affliction will be moved away. Every sickness will be moved away. All the activities of the devil in your brain, all the activities of the devil in your family, tonight I cast them down in Jesus' name. I want you to look at whatever it is in your life that needs to be cast down. Whatever it is in your life that needs to be pulled down. Whatever it is in your life that is referred to as a stronghold. This is the last time you are going to see that thing. These Egyptians that you see tonight, you will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Pulling down. Pulling down. Pulling down. Casting down. Casting down. The time has come. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life, your spiritual life, your family life, your physical life, every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted. It's time for us now to root everything out. You'll not find them again in Jesus' name. You want to raise up your hand, and if you have any challenge, your body lay the other hand in that part of your body, casting down, pulling down, pulling out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come at this time to do what you have called us to do. That every stronghold of the enemy in the life of any child of God here, I cast them down in Jesus' name. The afflictions of Satan. The attacks of Satan, all the activities of Satan, hindering the people from making progress. This time now, I cast them down in Jesus' name. All the hindrances of your life that will not allow you to make progress. Lord, in the strength of the Lord, in the might of the Lord, I pull everything down right now in Jesus' name. Evil spirit. Come out of that place in Jesus' name. All that evil power, come out in Jesus' name. The mountains on your back, the mountains on your chest, the mountains in your soul, the mountains in your spiritual life, not allow you to make progress, a lot of vows, a lot of consecration, a lot of decision, a lot of intention, a lot of I want to, I want to, but this load is hindering you. The stronghold is hindering you. You stronghold of the devil, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. You get money, you earn money, but it's all drugs, all hospital. You are out and in and in and out until you finish spending the money. They will not leave you alone. All that wastage in your life, I pull them down right now. I cast them down right now. You devil, with all your activities there, come out in Jesus' name. The person there that you wanted to get married, but HIV will not allow you to get married. You go for test now, they say it's positive. Test now, it is positive. Go to another place, positive. I reverse that thing in your life. You mountain of HIV AIDS, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. I pull down that stronghold of the devil in your life, in hindering your marriage, in Jesus' name. 
that child that was born with a particular deformity, that sin that you were born with is a stronghold and it's hindering you from making progress. And you're always thinking of that. You're revolving around that right now tonight at this moment I come against that thing you were born with and I pull down that stronghold. I cast down that stronghold and I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Somebody you offended long ago placed a curse on you. There's somebody I'm talking about, and since that time, you said, that's nothing, that's nothing. And then you use full faith. But do you know that everything that fellow said, you'll not be able to do this, you'll not do this, you have met that a failure every crossroad, every, every inch of the way. Tonight is the night of your deliverance. Lord, I cancel that curse. I break that yoke. I destroy that cause and that utterance of the enemy in Jesus' name. I release you now into the success. I release you into prosperity. I release you into all that God created for you to do in your life in Jesus' name. Now I pray for everybody. Raise up your hand, everybody. Oh Lord, from the first hall to the last hall, outside, inside, in the middle, left, right, anywhere they are now, and those who are far away, who are connecting with us with satellite. Lord, I pray right now. Everything that is the work of the devil in their lives, everything the work of the devil in their body, all those works of Satan, all those activities of Satan, I come to destroy them now. In the name of Jesus, be destroyed in Jesus' name. All the tiredness, all the weakness, all the failure, all the defeat, all the poverty, everything that has come a reproach in your life, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, touch everyone. Touch everyone. Get them out of this pit of poverty, out of this pit of need, out of this pit of scarcity. In Jesus' name. Blessing on every one of you. Miracle on every one of you. Deliverance on every one of you. Healing on every one of you. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I got, I got my own. I said I got my own. I said I got my own. Check up yourself, check up yourself. Is there right now? Is there right now? All those things are pulled now. All those things are cast down. All those plans, the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life. They're rooted out already. Thank God you are free. Thank God you are free. Say, thank God I am free. A local family that all the ends of the earth shall fear him. That's the reason we're here today. That will receive the key is healing power. Is saving power. The ability to take the healing stream out of one location and get into the ends of the earth. Harvesting in the last days. Through the healing revival. We're looking at three things here. Number one, turning and transforming the hurting with healing. Many people are hurting. That's why the world is responding to their hurt. Hospitals are springing up everywhere. Government hospital, private hospital, hospital by groups of people, hospital by individuals. It's because people are hurting. If the church will have as many evangelists, healing evangelists, as the world has, many doctors, diseases will be cleared away from our nation. If the church is as visionary as the people of the world to heal and to lift up hearts, many people suffering will be healed and will be sound. If the church will manifest love, 
that forgets ourselves and we reach out to the people who are hurting in the world, many problems will be solved. The doctors and the nurses and the hospitals and the people of the world, they have more love for the hurting than the church. Those doctors study seven years, more than seven years, to be able to heal the hurts of the world. How many days do you spend to search the world and to become a healing evangelist in the world? Turning and transforming the hurting with healing. Number two, teaching the truth of healing for the harvest. Teaching the truth of healing, the power of God to heal, the promise of God to heal, the possibility with every believer, everyone that follows the Lord, that he can be a healing soul winner. Teaching the truth of healing for the harvest. Number three, transforming the triumph of the healer to his household. Look at number one. Number one is turning and transforming the heart in what healing. You see, Jesus knew the importance of healing the sick. He knew that will draw the souls of men and women and children unto him, unto the Savior. Look at what he said in John chapter 4 verse 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine and uh, there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at Capernaum. Just one man. A noble man, a leader, a ruler among the people, and his son was sick. Normally, a noble man like that, a ruler, a leader like that, may not come to the open air meeting, may not be interested in seeking for Christ. Got money, got contact, got connections. Is God all the sand and the seed of this world? What's he looking for Christ for? But his son, precious son, was sick. Look at verse 47. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, when he heard that Jesus came out of Judea, out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Even Jesus had to come out to be of any use to this man at Capernaum. No matter what knowledge you have, what power you have, what possibilities reside in you. If you lock yourself up, if you are not available, if you don't come out, come out to the place where the people can reach you and touch you. You will not do any good. But Jesus came out of Judea into Galilee. And this noble man went to him and besought him and said, please, please, come down, heal my son, he's at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Jesus knew that the people must see signs and wonders. The people of the world need to see the healing power of the Lord. Except, except, ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. We will see wonders. The world will see wonders from the church. In every street, people are sick. In every street, there is a church. And when their people are sick, they don't think about the church there. They think about the hospital far away. We have the key to make the world see signs and wonders. And except they see signs and wonders, they will not come to Christ. They will not come to the church. They will go to their hospital and fetish priests. Turning the heart of the hurting with healing. Look at verse 49. In verse 49, the nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Look at verse 50. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Go thy way, thy son liveth. Jesus knew that the whole world was created by one sentence after another sentence. Let there be light. There was light. Let the waters gather up. Become the seas and the oceans. 
and it was so. And Jesus knew I and my father are one. When he said it, it was done. And we are one. When I say it, it will be done. Like father, like his only begotten son. Here is what my father will say. My father will say, go thy way, thy son live it. I am like my father. And I say unto you, noble man, go thy way, thy son live it. Christ and the believer were one. That they all may be one with us. I in them and thou in me. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The father will say, go thy way, thy son live it. The son said, go thy way, thy son live it. I am one with Christ. You are one with Christ. He says, go thy way, thy son live it. If you believe that what you say in Christ will be done, it will be done. It's not, it's not your stature. It's not your voice. It's not your intonation. It's not the grammar. Sickness does not understand grammar. Sickness does not know whether you make a, a, you make a mistake in your conjugation or sickness does not know conjugation. Satan does not know grammar. It's your heart. It's what to say in your heart. If you say it and believe it, it will be done. Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. Look at verse 51. As he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, Thy son liveth. What did Jesus say? Thy son liveth. He believed that. He went his way. And the servants came and said, Thy son liveth. Whatever Jesus has said, we will see it in your life. Look at verse 52. And he inquired of them the hour when he began to amend. The, the man believed, but he was thinking natural and spiritual. Naturally, when you take pills or tablets or medicine, you begin to amend gradually. You take another one, you improve until eventually after some days, everything will be clear. So he was thinking like, you know, prayer is like pills. When did he begin to amend? And he said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, not from the seventh hour, at the seventh hour, the fever, fear left him. He didn't begin gradually to amend. When Jesus spoke the word, the fever left him. Now, turning and transforming the hurting with healing. Look at verse 53. So the father knew that it was at that same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth himself believed and his whole house is the healing that turned the heart of the man and he was convinced and he had faith in Christ that this healer is the savior himself believed and his whole household believed that is the result of healing through Christ. When the apostles took over, the same things happened. Acts chapter 9 verse 32. In Acts chapter 9 verse 32, and it came to pass as Peter passed through all the quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Leda. Verse 33, it says, And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years. He was bedridden, he was sick, and there was no possibility for him to be healed. In eight years, he was sick of the palsy. Look at verse 34. Peter said unto him, 
How does healing take place? How does miracle take place? Peter said unto him, How do people get healed? Jesus said unto them, How do spectacular healings, how do they take place? By the word was speak. Now, we know the words will speak. If you believe yourself when you speak, if you make that a habit when you speak, and whatever you say, you always believe, I said what I meant, I meant what I said. It will become a habit. You speak to Brother Samuel. You mean what you say, you say what you mean. You say to Mr. Sickness, and you believe what you say, you mean what you say, you say what you mean. You speak to a satanic spirit, and you say what you mean, and you mean what you say. Anything you are talking to, anyone you are talking to, you say what you mean from your heart. When Jesus spoke to the blind, he believed what he said. When Jesus spoke to the fig tree, just the word. God, he believed what he said. And if you will say to this mountain, I mean what you say, and say what you mean, and not doubt in your heart, whatever you say will be done. Peter understood. When I understand that God has given me the ministry, when you understand that the Lord has given you the ministry, you stand in his place. You stand representing him. And you say what he would say. And you say it confidently, persuasively. You believe it will be done. I tell my boy, get up. Bring that chair here. I don't have any doubt in my mind that my boy will get up and go and bring that chair. But you understand, my boy, he has free will. He can disobey if he wants to. But I just believe that my boy will not disobey. Go bring that chair. Now, I speak to sickness. Sickness does not have free will. Sickness does not have the possibility of choice. It's like the chair there does not have any possibility of choosing whether to be moved or not to be moved. My boy who has the liberty to say yes or no, he obeys. The chair that has no liberty to say yes or no is what I say that will happen. And so Peter said, understanding, I say what I mean, I mean what I say. And Peter said unto him, Ernest, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise, make up thy bed. And the man, he couldn't do otherwise. The word had come from Christ, from heaven, unto Peter, the human being, and it's come to this person, he has to obey. And he arose immediately. What's the result of that? Turning and transforming the hurting with healing. Look at the next verse. Verse 35. And all that dwell at Leda and Saron saw him and they turned to the Lord. That's what the miracle healing power of God does. Point number two. Here we're looking at teaching the truth of healing for the harvest. In Mark chapter 3, we're looking at verse 14. Mark chapter 3, verse 14. And he ordained the twelve that they should be with him, that he might send them forth to preach. He appointed them. He called them. He wanted them to be near so as to learn, so that he will teach them how to preach, what to preach, what to do to make that preaching effective. Look at verse 15. And to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Now, how did he teach them? There are many ways of teaching. You can go to school, you can stay in the class, and the teacher can write on the board, and then you can take notes and learn and learn and learn. That's one way of learning. Many people who learn that way, they do not do what they learn. Our children go to school, they learn physics, they learn all the connections, they come back home, they press in iron what which was smoothing our clothes as problem. The boy having a distinction in physics at school cannot repair that pressing ion. That kind of learning 
it works, but not always. The mother wants to teach her daughter how to cook. It doesn't get her before a scream. I bring it, my daughter, this is how to cook. You take all these ingredients, you wash, clean them, you prepare the pot, you do this, you do that. Uh -uh. Mama doesn't teach how to cook like that. My daughter come and she, mama, washes the pot. Cleans all those things, cuts them in pieces, puts this pot, put this next, and then soup comes out. She does it the second time. She does it every day. And the daughter is just watching and she's learning. Christ brought those disciples together. He was to teach them to have the power to heal and the authority to cast out devils. He brought them near. How did they learn? Number one, by observation. They saw him. That's how he speaks to sickness. Rise up and take your bed and go back to your home. And Peter said, Aeneas, rise up, arise and take up your bed. They learned by observation. Number two, he taught them by demonstration. He wanted to raise the dead. And he picked Peter, James, and John. And they went with him into the place where the daughter of uh, what Jairus' daughter was dead. And he spoke the word. And the child rose up. Demonstration. And because of the way he taught them, he had the demonstration, they had the observation. Consecration. I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. And they saw his consecration. He was teaching them. He was modeling for them how to use healing power to make the people of the harvest time come up into the kingdom of God. Submission. I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. I submit to the will of my father. That's how he taught them. Separation. John the Baptist that came before him did no miracle. He didn't say that's my forerunner. He did no miracle and so I'll follow my forerunner. He knew the calling of the father upon him and he distinguished himself by what he did and they were learning and then uh, by utterance by declaration master if you can do anything uh, help us and now he declared to that man if you can only believe all things are possible to him the believers it's when you bring all those things together you see the teaching ministry of christ in practical things there are many things in life we learn there are theoretic things that you can only think about only meditate on you can only turn it in your mind in your brain theoretical things there are practical things and i say wait that one is taught and you imbibe that you embrace that you internalize that and it comes how did moses teach joshua Calling him to a separate class. No, no, come. Observe and come. See the demonstration. Come. See the declaration. You see it, it enters into you. And then you begin to say, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm to do. I learn and then I go and practice. How did Elijah teach and train Elisha? This is how you do this. Elisha did not have any notebook. Observation, demonstration, manifestation, and the deed that was done. That's how they learned. And when you look at all the people in the Bible that manifest their power, it's not by what they wrote, it's by what they observed. And then when they observed deed, they did it. It says to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Look at John chapter 14, verse 10. In John chapter 14, verse 10, Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? 
he himself believed he was in the father and the father was in him and that's the, the foundation of talking like the father of saying it like the father of seeing it like the father and of demonstrating and doing it like the father the father in me and i in the father do you believe that christ the healer is in you and you are in Christ the healer. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, doeth the works. That's what he wants us to learn. He's teaching us the truth. That we need to understand the Father is in me and I am in the Father. The healer dwells in me and I dwell in the healer. And the words I speak, they are not my words. They are his words. Anytime he saw the sick, he will not pass by like that. He will heal that sick person. And anytime I see the sick, I allow him to speak through me. Do I believe that when I speak to that sickness, do I believe I am not the one speaking? Do I believe that my word will not do anything? But he that dwells in me constantly, he doeth the work. Do I believe that Christ will speak every time in me? Oh, some people say, I'm sorry, I should have fasted seven days. My fasting for seven days would open the mouth of Christ in me to speak. But now, since I didn't fast seven days, he will not speak. Mm -hmm. that's not true you cannot close the mouth of jesus if he is there your fasting doesn't open the mouth of jesus the christ that lives in me he speaks the word pastor are you telling us that fasting is not important it's important but i'm saying that it is not your fasting that makes christ arise and act peter and john were going to the temple at the hour of prayer. They had not fasted up. They had not prayed up. They had not done anything. They, was to, they were going to the place of prayer. Before they go to the place of prayer, they saw somebody at the gate of the temple. Ah, we have not fasted enough. We have not prayed enough. Okay, well, go into the temple of prayer. After praying, praying, and praying well, I hope that man will still be there. Will come back to him. No, they stop there. What do we have? We have Christ living on the inside of us. We have the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing to heal. We'll go to the place of prayer. We'll go and thank God for what He has done. But now we need to act. And Peter said to the man, "Look on us." He knew something was about to happen. When you get to that sick man, you know something is about to happen. Silver and gold have I not. Why are you then waiting here for me? Because I'm not going to use the natural, I'm going to use the supernatural. Money, natural. Silver, natural. All those tangible things we can take and touch and distribute, natural. Your stamina, the way you stand, natural. Your physique, natural. The sound of your voice, natural. You can talk with the natural gift to the man. You cannot talk with the natural gift to the sickness, to the demon, to the problem. That one has to be supernatural. But what I have, I give unto thee. I have my hand before I get to walking on that machine. I have the gift before I get to the person I'm going to give something to. That's what he wants us to realize. What I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Jesus of Nazareth, the one that does all things perfect. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Nobody ever spoke to that man like that before. And the man is 40 years of age. And he was alive in Jerusalem when Christ was alive. Nobody ever brought him to Jesus. They always took him to the door, to the gate of the temple. And what Christ had not done because the man had not come when he was on earth, 
his disciples, the body, the arms, the hand, and the representative of Christ, they now did what Christ would have done if the man had been brought to Christ at his time. And that man got well, and you will get well, and the people you go to will get well. He said, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. And we say, the Christ that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. It's not how you feel. It's not what you feel. As I'm talking, do I have brain? Yes. I shake my head. Do I feel the brain there? No. As I'm walking about, do I see my eyes, my eyeballs? No. Do I have eyes? Do I see? It is not what I feel is who I have. You may not feel that anything is there. The name of Jesus has been given to you. You're a believer. He has given you the name. In my name, they shall cast out devils. If they did any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They will take off serpents and throw them away. They, the man. The woman, the believing man, the believing woman, they shall lay hands on the sea and they shall recover. If somebody tells me something, I don't know whether it's true or not. Okay, I'll test it. I'll go and do what he said I should do and that this will happen, I will prove it. He says, I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'll prove it. And I lay hands on this. What happens? They recover. Go and prove it. When we go out of the meeting today, look for somebody who is sick. I want to prove what he has told me. Look for somebody having a challenge. I see one. And then as I'm going, I'm not saying, will it, will it not? Prove it. That's what the farmer does. That when you plant, it will grow. He doesn't go to university and say the process of germination and the process of bearing fruit. Anyone educated, illiterate, put that seed on the ground, cover it up. Go your way. Don't think about it. When you come back, in a few days' time, look at what you're planting. It's already coming up. It's going to bear fruit. Go and prove it. He has given us his name. And he said in my name, they'll cast out devil. They will heal the sea. And they wait for everywhere. Preaching the word. And the Lord walking with them. He is ready. You get up. You go and do it. You'll see miracle in your ministry. Look at verse 12. Here. John chapter 14, verse 12. Very late, very late, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. This is your day and your time. You are the one you will do it. We're looking at point number three here, transmitting the triumph of the healer to his household. Transmitting the triumph of the healer to his household. Look at this man. He's been working all his years. He's got large bank account. He's got a lot of resources. Now, he's built this company and that company. And he knows he'll soon be leaving our territory here. And he calls his household. And he says, I'm not going to be here on earth forever. Whether I like it or not, I have to go to my home beyond the sky. All these things that I've got, if I don't do something about it and write my will, everything will go into the hands of the government and people I don't know will eat everything up. And so he brings all his household together. He's a generous and loving and just father. He loves all the children and his wife that is still around as he's going. And he distributes everything now into their hands. And he says, you get yours. You get yours. He comes to the youngest in the family. Say, come here. Picks him up and kisses him or kisses her. Said, I'm sorry I have to leave. Get your own. And everybody in the household, they got their own. What do you think of Jesus? He was to go up. He said, I have to go because I go to prepare a place for you. And when I finish preparing the place for you, I will come again. I 
will take you unto myself. If he is so generous to go and prepare mansions for us in heaven, about what he has over here, he distributes to everyone. And no one is left out. Today, you receive. When Moses was to leave, did he just sneak away? And he called Joshua. And everything he had, he said, take. All you need to guide and to lead the children of Israel, after I'm gone, take your own. And when Elijah was to leave, did he just go like that? Ask me what you want before I be taken away from you. And he gave him what he wanted. And Jesus to all his disciples of that time and of this time he has made available for you and for me everything we will need in ministry. And he said whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, I'll give it to you. I want, su I want success. It's done. I want fruit. It's done. I want the healing ministry. It is done. He gives the gift to everyone without partiality. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm looking at verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with that. Every man has the gift. The sick people are in the world. And the Lord gives you the gift, the healing gift. All you need to do is to understand you, are, you have it already. And the name of Jesus has been given to you. Go in the name of the Lord. You will succeed. The sick will be healed. Power will flow from you. Because he has given to every man to profit without. You will be profitable to the kingdom of God. Profitable to the harvesting of the last day. The spirit of the Lord is now upon you. The gift of the Lord is now within you. If you close your mouth, the water to quench the thirst of everyone is in your bottle. But you close it up and you hold it yourself. And we're all thirsty and the water we need is in your hand. And you close it up. Open your bottle and go to the people. You need a drink, 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 drink. And you will satisfy many lives in this country and beyond this country. Amen. If I want to give you something, and I set my hand and say, take. And you fold your hand at your back and keep on sitting down. And you don't come. And I'm stretching out my hand. All the day have I stretched out my hand to a nation that will not respond. That's why the Lord said, because you reject what I give, I turn to the Gentiles. What is yours, you will get. Everything we spoke about, you will get. When are you going to get it? Your gift, when? The healing, when? The power, when? Rise up and get it. It's there for you, my brother. It's there for you, my sister. Don't say, I've never done that. You will start today. Healing gift. Healing power. Healing possibilities. It's yours. Christ dwells with you. His power dwells with you. His authority is given to you. And the name of Jesus that can never fail has been given to you. I have. I have, I possess. It's living on the inside of me. The Jesus will never fail. The man that has Jesus, you cannot fail. The woman that has the name of Jesus, you cannot fail. It's not your posture. It's not your grammar. It's not your physique. But the name of the person that dwells inside you. He's there. He's there. You have it. Power, you have power. Utterance, you have utterance. Say to the mountain, be thou removed, and it shall be removed. You are a favored son, a favored daughter in the sight of your father. He doesn't think negative about you. He doesn't think impossibility about you. He doesn't think weakness about you. He loves you. And has given you his only begotten son. 
and the son has given you his mighty powerful name you will do it and you'll be a prophet to the kingdom of god prophet 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 to the kingdom of god In Jesus' name we pray. I praise God for every one of you. You will go out. You'll go and prove what the Lord has given you. Before the final prayer, let me just tell you this. We are all thirsty. We want to drink. Wonderful. I see somebody coming in and it brings water in. And he serves the water. And then he doesn't serve you. And you keep quiet. You see him giving the water to everyone. And he doesn't give you. Maybe he doesn't like my face. Maybe he wants me thirsty. And leaves me like that. Why don't you talk? Why don't you pull a shirt? I am here. What have I done? Where is my water? Everybody will have. Everybody will have. God is not a man. God is not a man that he will pass you by. My brother, this is your time. My sister, this is your time. You are having your own. In Jesus' name we pray. It's for everyone. Where are you? Rest of that hand. It will fill you to overflowing. Healing will start in your own body. And then you will carry that healing power to the sick. After the meeting, go look for somebody sick. Go and prove what you have got. And lay these anointed hands on them. They will get well. Your hands up again for anointing, for power, for breaking you. Father, in Jesus' name, the God of love, the God of power, the God with no partiality, your sons and your daughters, your servants are before you today. I'm asking, Lord, the healing virtue will come into every life in Jesus' name. Sickness will not cut short your life. Sickness will not cut short your ministry. Sickness will not make you impotent and useless. Healing power, healing strength, healing virtue, and time to everyone right now. It is done. You are well. You are healed. You are delivered. Now, the strength of the Lord upon your life. Go in this strength to the world around you. Go heal the sick. Go deliver the oppressed and as you lay hands on the sick they shall recover as you mention the name of jesus that name will heal the sick become a healing harvester 
become a healing soul winner. Everywhere you go now, signs and wonders will follow you. Miracle and healing will follow you. The anointing will never dry up in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is done. Praise the Lord. We are doing very, very well. We have our last message for the morning section. Um, the Lord will give us the grace to finish well and finish hard in Jesus' name. So we will go and take our um, next hymn, Standing on the Promises of